Hello there, welcome back and welcome to part 80 in my build log series of the Trumpeter 1 to 200 scale model of the Titanic. Today I am working on the lifeboats. Been very excited to get to this point because obviously lifeboats have a fairly major part to do in the story of Titanic. Um, clearly I won't finish them today. There's a huge amount of work involved with getting the lifeboats there. You've got to cut them out of the support material. Get them painted, sand them, add decals, add grab lines, got to get the davits done. You know, there's, there's a lot of work here. So it's not going to all be done in one episode, probably not even two. It'll probably be over three episodes of this. But we'll see how far we get today. Without any further ado, let's crack on. Right, lifeboats. Uh, there's a few different options for what I could use here. I could use the kit. Um, and actually, I think the ones that come in the kit are pretty good. Uh, I can't show you them because I've given my kit lifeboats away to somebody else um, but I think they're pretty good uh, or I could use the KA lifeboats or lastly China 3D now between KA and China 3D was a bit of a challenge I struggled to work out which ones I liked more uh, in the end I've decided to go for China 3D and the reason for that is because of the canvas on the top. So had Titanic sank on her 13th or 14th voyage, or if I was making a model of the Olympic, I would go for the KA. But because Titanic sank on her maiden voyage, I'm going to go for China 3D. Now my rationale here, okay, is that the lifeboats were all covered with canvas and the canvas was there, you know, keep the elements off. The lifeboats are pretty exposed, they're right on the deck, you know, they're going to get rained on, they'll get spray from the sea, birds will do the business on them, yada yada yada. Um, <clears throat> so they get a pretty rough treatment. Uh, so they're covered and, you know, they have these canvas covers on them to stop water building up inside them. And canvas is a great material for that, but what you tend to find is over time, it will stretch and it will sag. And, you know, over time, water will pool in them and it'll stretch the canvas material apart. Um, the ultraviolet rays from the sun will sort of stain it and bleach it and, you know, generally discolour it. Um, and all these things manifest in, over time, the canvas becoming a bit saggy and a bit sort of... Uh, not quite as sort of taut as once it was. And so that's why I say... Had Titanic done a few voyages, I would have chosen the KA lifeboats, because as you can see, the canvas just has that slight, subtle rippling all the way along its length, which is very nice, and it adds a bit of interesting detail. Whereas the China 3D ones have none of that detail at all. They're very flat. In fact, you know, you really actually wouldn't know it was canvas at all unless you properly sort of looked at it. And personally, that's what I think is more realistic. If you look at photographs of Titanic, the canvas on her lifeboats was very, very taut. Now, that's because they'll have been brand new, lifeboats will have been fitted to the ship very late on, um, so that's why the canvas would look very fresh and very taut. Now, of course, it wouldn't have stayed like that for very long because they would be out in the elements 24 seven, they'll go through freezing temperatures, hot temperatures, you know, they would very rapidly degrade. But because Titanic was so new, I think the canvas would have been very taut and photographs I have seen back that up. So it was a very close battle between KA and China 3D, but on this occasion, I am going to use the China 3D all because of how fresh the canvas looks. So first things first, I'll get these cut out and then we'll start sanding and painting.
Right, here we are, and as you can see, we've got our four collapsibles, our two 25 foot cutters, and our 14 30 foot main boats. Uh, they've all got a slightly undesirable sort of polka dot kind of appearance on the top at the minute, that's just because of the extraction from the support material. Uh, <clears throat> so, careful sanding required, and then we can go over with our first coat of black paint. So as the time lapse suggests, I've been using a hot knife to uh, separate these boats from their support material. Um, I This is actually the oil burning part of a miner's lamp, um, but it does the job just fine. It's not a very sooty flame, which is good because it means the knife doesn't get covered in black soot, which of course means that you don't get any black soot on your lifeboats. Uh, if you use something like a candle, uh, the knife will get sooty and then soot will go all, all, all over the all over the parts, which isn't necessarily an issue, it just means you've got to then wash them again before you, you proceed. Um, but this works very well for me. Um, so, um, the two smaller class of boats, the Engelharts and the 25-foot cutters, are identical to each other. But it is just worth noting that the 30-foot boats are subtly different. Uh, and the only difference is I'll turn different ones upside down so you can see. Uh, it's in the placement of the chocks that hold them underneath. So this curved portion of the stem of the boat is the front section and the pointier section is the aft. Both of these boats are orientated the same way, pointy end here, curved end there, and you can see that the chocks are on different sides. And of course that makes perfect sense. It's because one of these boats would have belonged on the port side of the ship and the other boat would have belonged on the starboard side of the ship. So nothing to worry about, and obviously if you buy this set you'll you'll get ample quantity to, to meet your purpose, but just worth noting that you'll need seven with the chocks on one side and seven with the chocks on the other side. Now then, I'm just doing a little bit of a job sanding down my lifeboats. And as you can see, we've got three different types. We've got this 30-foot boat, which you can see the remnants of the support material there that needs to be removed before we can paint. Then we've got the collapsibles, which I've already done. And then we've got the 25-foot cutters, which I'm going to do last because they're the most delicate ones. So, 20 boats to get through. Um, and this is actually a little bit tricky because it's, it, uh, it's very difficult to know when they are genuinely smooth. I'm running my hand down that now and I cannot feel any bumps. And that tends to be, for me, uh, running your finger along and feeling for any bumps or obstructions is a far more effective way of gauging if something is smooth than by eye. Um, but proof will be in the pudding. Uh, what we'll do is we'll paint them. And if th there is obvious occlusions and stuff on the work, we'll just have to carry on sanding till we get it as we want it. No big problem. Now, a reminder, as always, this is resin. It's not nice stuff. Uh, you want to make sure that you're wearing protection when you do this. So as you can see, I'm wearing rubber gloves. And you can get these, you can get a big box of like 200 pairs of these off Tinterweb. So I would recommend doing that because they're nice and cheap and they do a good job. Um, the other thing I'm doing, you'll notice I am dampening down the work. So as I go, you'll notice that both the file and the lifeboat are covered in water. And every so often just re-dunk it in the water. And what that does is it just stops any of the dust produced becoming airborne. Now, I also tend to wear a mask when I do this sort of thing. Uh, in the UK, the mask that I use is called an FFP3 mask, and it's a mask that filters out particulates from the air. So it's a bit more sophisticated than a just a simple mask that you might wear. Um, you know, it's got a sort of like actual filter on it and stuff like that. Uh, and that's what you want for this kind of job. So um, I know it's tempting not to do this sort of stuff, but I really would honestly wear some sort of protection when you're dealing with resin because it's... It's nasty stuff, uh, and you certainly don't want it in your lungs. So that brings me on to the water. As I say, what this is doing is it's stopping the dust becoming airborne. So as I produce the dust by scraping my file along the side, that dust just gets soaked up by the water. And of course, it's still in the water. I'll still need to clean this area thoroughly once I'm done, but it's not becoming airborne, and therefore I am not in danger of breathing it in. And even if it did become airborne, I'm wearing a mask, so it doesn't matter. Um, 
But of course, the real benefit of stopping the dust becoming airborne is it doesn't then go and land on other surfaces and hang around for longer times than would be necessary. You know, this, it kind of it reduces the amount of cleanup you've got to do. It's just a much better idea. So uh, on to my actual process. All I'm doing is with a relatively smooth file, this is a diamond file, um, I'm just going across the entire surface of the boat, smoothing it down. Now these are fortunately, they're quite flat, so you can see that that side here, it's very flat, so you can pretty much hold the file on and just go straight across like that. Uh, on the extremities, I am doing a bit more sort of localised filing around the edges and stuff like that. Uh, but really, this isn't too challenging a job. I mean, I say that, I've not painted them yet. This doesn't seem like too challenging a job. Uh, it's just time consuming because you've got 20, 20 boats. Essentially, you copy and paste the same procedure 20 times. And that will be the same when we come on to painting and adding decals and stuff onto these later anyway. So I will move into time lapse now so I can put my music back on. Uh, and you can watch me sand the remaining ooh, 14 odd boats in time lapse. And then we'll start doing an undercoat of black paint after that. As you can see, painted the tops, and they're pretty good, but there is just a smidge of markings from the support material remaining, and of course that's just not good enough. Uh, these will be extremely visible on the boat deck, of course, so we really can't afford anything spoiling the look at all of these. Um, I think it's most notable on the collapsibles, actually, particularly this one here. Uh, so need to do, go and do a bit more sanding, a bit more filing, and just remove as much of this material as we can. So as you can see, uh, the lifeboat is pretty smooth on the surface. Maybe you can't see, I can't really tell on the camera. It's pretty smooth, but it's not superb. And of course, because these are going to be so visible, I, I really don't think there's any point in trying to save a bit of time or, you know, rush this job. These are going to be as visible as anything else on the model because they're right on the boat deck, right at the top. So um, I am going and sanding the canvas covers once again. And here's one that I've already done. And as you can see, I hope the camera picks it out. That is a much smoother surface now. Uh, I'm pretty confident that when I go and spray this, that will be a flat surface and not have the bubbles left over from the support material. Uh, just, just ignore the end bits which still have black paint on. Those are little slits in the canvas where the actual lines went down into the lifeboat to allow it to be lowered. Uh, so yeah, we're going over and we're sanding these again. So uh, this is 800 grit and as before, obviously wearing gloves, getting a bit of water so that the dust doesn't become airborne. And as you would normally, just a nice circular motion And, as you can see, the paint gives us a good idea of how flat the surface really is, because of course the high spots will be sanded immediately, the low spots will not. So this gives us a good clue, it's a bit like using Engineers Blue, you know, it's a good clue uh, to tell us when we can stop sanding, because that will, once all the paint's gone, we know that the level is pretty much uniform throughout the lifeboat. I've got a pool of water off to the side from the camera, which is why the lifeboat occasionally disappears from view.
So, there we go. That looks pretty good now. Yep. That's pretty good. So, we'll just carry on. About 20 bits to go. 19 now. So, so we'll carry on with that. Now then, just sprayed over with another coat of black. Uh, and I don't want to tempt fate too early, but look at this. They look absolutely spiffing, don't they? Really nice, clean look on the top of all the boats now. No remnants of the support material. So this is hunky-dory. Very happy with this. So um, the plan is, of course, to paint the undersides as well in black. Then we'll go over and do the white that they'll finish in. Then there'll be an element of hand painting. Uh, then they'll be adding all of these grab lines and then we'll get on to the decals and that'll be our lifeboat. And then here we are after the first spray of white uh, and I'm afraid that is where the video must end today because um, what's happened is I've been really really clever and what I've done is I haven't bought enough white paint so run out uh, and in fact, this was indeed the end of the last can I had. So um, we uh, need to wait till more comes, basically. Uh, it's it's in the mail. It's coming. Uh, hopefully it'll be here tomorrow. Uh, but I want to put this video out tomorrow. So this seems like a logical place to end the video. Honestly, what an idiot, eh? But anyway, that aside, um, that is where we're at for now. Um just finish off with a shot again of the model. Doesn't it look nice? I do I do really like the railings, I've got to say. They do, they add a certain je ne sais quoi to it. Well, in fact, I, I know exactly what it is they add. They add railings. Um, but anyway, I'll leave with a shot of the model. Um, that is the end of the first video on lifeboats. Hopefully we will get more up soon. The next step, of course, is to finish off the white paint on the underside of the lifeboats. Do the same on the top. Uh, and then I'll be putting on decals, things like the uh, the White Star uh, flag, <clears throat> and also the, uh, the the name Titanic, which you know will, will not be legible in this scale. Um, and there were also sort of boards that said the amount of persons that were permitted in a lifeboat and so on. So I'll be putting those on. Uh, we will be adding the grab lines, and then I want to do a little bit of distressing on the canvas itself. Maybe just, I want to do some sort of water streaking lines or something like that, so maybe a very, very, very pale grey wash or something along those lines, just to make the canvas stand out slightly from the white of the lifeboat. But anyway, that will be in the next episode. So, uh, that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you do have any questions or comments, what have you, pop them down below and I will do my best to get back to you. Uh, if you've enjoyed this, do please like and subscribe. If you haven't enjoyed this, do please like and subscribe. And I shall see you in the next one. Bye for now.